Tonight on Dispatches, as a drought hits Britain and a fifth of drinking water goes to waste through leaks. Oh my God, oh, that is so rank. We investigate why water companies are still dumping untreated sewage into our rivers and seas. Every time my children go to water, I think, what are they swimming in? And reveal how companies are breaking the law. They're allowed to discharge from that, are they? This is off the books. We find signs of faeces in the water at one of Britain's best beaches. Would you be happy going swimming? Personally, no, I wouldn't. An insider tells us why the Environment Agency isn't up to the job. We aren't aggressive. We don't enforce to the same extent against water companies. So as water company bosses enjoy their bonuses, who will pay to fix Britain's broken sewage system? The cost is estimated at another £65 on your water bill per year. Oh, look at this, the great British summer. And when the weather is this good, all I want to do is hit the beach and go for a swim. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Look at that. Pollution warnings are in place for almost 50 beaches as untreated sewage has been discharged into coastal waters Modern following... Water has been fined for dumping billions of litres of raw sewage into the sea. But maybe this isn't such a good idea. The 12 companies responsible for treating wastewater in the UK dumped raw sewage into our rivers and seas more than a thousand times a day on average last year. That's raw sewage, toilet paper, used wet wipes, sanitary towels. Definitely not the kind of stuff you want to go swimming in. Earlier this summer, I asked you to send me videos of the state of the waterways across the country. Oh, my God. What is that? Oh, no, it's just like a mat of wet wipes. That is just like a curtain of crud. That is just truly disgusting. Cloudy water, that looks like, that looks like feces to me. Good God. The state of our rivers and seas is so bad that some water companies are now under criminal investigation over their sewage dumping practices. Last year, five of them were given fines that totaled over £100 million. So how have they been allowed to get away with it for so long? The Environment Agency has warned that the drought declared in many parts of England could last into next year. Water companies in England and Wales were privatised in the 1980s. With around 3 billion litres of water lost each day, water firms are facing criticism for not doing enough to tackle leaks. Despite consistently shocking performance, top bosses were compensated nearly £25 million last year. Oh, Christ alive. Just pulled over, I could smell. Oh, my God. And I've only travelled a few miles when I find what seems to be a sewage spill. So this is a tidal area, a, a really precious habitat absolutely stinks, it's black, vile, whatever it is. You can smell it. Look at the state of that. Oh, that is unbelievable. Look at that, look at the colour of it. Southern water is allowed to discharge untreated sewage here in very wet weather. But there's been minimal rainfall over the last week, so this appears to be illegal. I can take a lot of smells. <laughs> I keep pigs. But that, oh, there's something else. Southern Water told us it is working on reducing reliance on the storm release system. So where is all this stuff coming from? The sewage system doesn't just take waste away from our homes, it also carries rainwater. 
In very wet weather, the system can get overwhelmed. And that's where these things come in, storm overflows. There are 15,000 of them across the country, from inner cities to our beaches. And they kind of work like a release valve, allowing sewage and rainwater to spill out into our rivers and our seas, rather than backing up and flooding our homes. But water companies have been dumping untreated sewage from them much too frequently. For more than 2.7 million hours last year, each pipe should have a permit from the environment regulator, but we've discovered some are being used illegally. Hi there, you must be Theo. That's it, nice to meet you. Nice to see you, I'm Jim. So what have you got to show me? Oh, wow, look at this river. Yeah, the River Brent. Beautiful. Theo Thomas is part of a group campaigning to clean up London's waterways. He's found pipes without permits on the River Brent in London. It takes me back to being a kid. When I grew up, I had a river just like this, and I loved it. Kingfishers, caddisfly larvae, mayfly, beautiful. I mean, this looks sort of like a river, but when you look at the riverbed, it appears to be dead, and it stinks. What's the problem? Well, we think that this is part of it, so... That huge, great big out there? Yeah. In there is one of the biggest sewer mains in London. So under here, there's a pipe which could have the sewage from around a million people. In dry weather, yeah. it's OK, it can cope. The capacity is, is bad enough. But when it rains, a lot of, of that rainfall ends up coming off the streets and off roofs and going into the sewer. Up it flows, and if it can't cope, it'll come flowing out of there. So that's a legal outflow. They're allowed to discharge from that, are they? <sighs> Well, that's the grey area. It's unconsented, so it doesn't have a permit. Every combined sewer overflow should have a permit given by the Environment Agency, so it's regulated. This is off the books, so we have no idea when it blows and how much comes out. So hang on, so it doesn't have a permit, it's unregulated, but it's in use? It looks like it is, yeah. It, we've got a photo of it flowing out. Oh, my God, look at that. So that isn't just a little pipe weeping. That is a torrent, <laughs> and in that, could be raw sewage, couldn't mm -hmm. it? Do Thames ought to know it's in use, then? They know it exists, and they're now investigating them. We asked them, on the official figures, there are 20 combined sewer overflows for the River Brent and its catchment. The list we got back, there's another 20 that are unconsented. So there could be double the number of sewers which might be overflowing. Thames Water told us, we believe it is unacceptable for untreated sewage to enter rivers, even when legally permitted. We take this matter very seriously and are taking action to reduce discharges. Dispatches has discovered more than 870 sewage discharge pipes across the country without permits. Welsh Water has 184 and says they are all in use. Northumbrian Water has 61 and again all are in use. Seven Trent has 420, but failed to say how many are being used. It is illegal for water companies to dump untreated sewage from pipes without a permit. This is really disturbing. In fact, it's unbelievable. You know, sewage dumping is supposed to be tightly regulated, but it's clear that some water companies are totally ignoring the rules. Seven Trent, Northumbrian and Welsh Water told us they are working proactively with the Environment Agency to ensure the correct permits are in place for all storm overflows. Around the country, 1,500 pipes dump raw sewage into the sea. Swimming in sewage can cause diarrhea, vomiting and serious illness but the Environment Agency carries out tests at popular beaches around England and says 70% have excellent water quality. But for me, the two just don't tally up. So I'm here to meet someone who's been looking into how our beaches are assessed. Right, and I think that is her now. Look at that out there, that is incredible. This is on your doorstep. Yeah, it's beautiful. Wow, I've got a bit of swim here. Bianca Carr runs an organisation that campaigns for cleaner beaches. There's already people out there. Yep, absolutely. They're out there all day, every day. This beach is classified one of the best in the UK. Yeah. The Environment Agency, they must be testing all the time to keep that status. 
So, well, you'd think that, but this is only tested about 20 odd times in the bathing season. Just 20 times? Yes, that's it. It needs to be much more frequent. We feel that it's not really an accurate representation of what's going on in the water. Less than two miles away, a sewage works dumped untreated sewage into the sea for more than 750 hours last year. But Bianca says some of the tests that find pollution can be discarded by the Environment Agency. They are allowed to throw away 15%, and it could be the worst results that we've had, and say, no, we're not going to use that one. We'll do another one another time. But the pollution's still there? Yes. That's crazy. I don't understand how that could be a result is a result. If there's been a massive spillage, you shouldn't be allowed just to say, well, that's one of the 15% I can get rid of. I would now not feel confident swimming in there. No, every time my children or anyone goes into water, I think, what are they swimming in? Is it a risk? Do I stop them from going in there? Or do I let them just carry on and we hope for the best? 238 beaches have an excellent water quality rating from the Environment Agency. But at over half of those beaches, there were spills of untreated sewage last year, 3,000 in total. The agency says ratings reflect normal conditions and it can discard results when the causes of pollution are so abnormal they will only happen once every four years. But here at Ride on the Isle of Wight, three test results were discarded last year alone. OK, got on my kit. All right. Just put my waders on. The agency gives this beach an excellent water quality rating. Even though there's been 100 sewage pollution alerts here already this year. So how clean is the water? To find out, we're going to test for faecal indicators. That's poo to you and me. I'll put the lid on while it's under the water. We do this every day for a week. This is going off to the lab. So when I get the results back, I'll find out what's in here and if I should swim or not. Coming up, we discover what's in the water. Would you be happy going swimming? Personally, I, no, I wouldn't. And an insider tells us why the Environment Agency isn't up to the job. So you have to trust what the water companies tell you? Yeah. Water companies make huge profits, but are they doing enough to tackle Britain's sewage pollution problem? We've been testing what's really in the sea on an Isle of Wight beach where the Environment Agency say water quality is excellent. The results are now in and show that on one day, one indicator of faecal pollution was more than 40 times higher than on the other days. I'm meeting up with a microbiologist to find out what the results mean. Hi. Nice to meet you. Right. We've taken some samples on the beach here across a week and had them analysed. I want you to have a look at the data just to see what you think. So the first one, I'll give you this one here. What do they tell you? That value seems quite high. That value is uh, 1,800 commonly forming units per 100 ml. Seems quite high. What would that indicate? It might indicate the presence of recent faecal pollution, but these particular indicators don't tell us which come from humans and which right. come from animals. So depending on the surrounding area that's affecting these beaches, um, you know, some of this could be seagulls, some of this could be dogs, and some of it could be human sewage. Would you be happy going swimming? Personally, I, no, I wouldn't. For myself, I wouldn't. We've known for over 100 years that feces in water is really bad for our health. Our tests can't tell us what caused the high reading, but data from Southern Water shows that on the day of the high result, untreated sewage was released at the beach illegally for over two and a half hours. Southern Water told us it is investing record amounts to improve customer service and protect the environment. Splashing in the water is such an important part of childhood. But you know what? Knowing what I know now, I'm not sure I'd let my kids swim here. And I bet the folks here have no idea the untreated sewage is being released here. <laughs> On 
On average, over the last 10 years, private water companies have invested five to six billion pounds a year in infrastructure. But they've also paid out 1.7 billion a year in dividends to shareholders. So, have they invested enough? Hi there, you must be Bill. Hi. Good morning, Jim. How are you? Good to see you. Well. Yeah, good to see you. Right, so is this our ride? This is our ride. Can I go in the back? Please do. And we'll paddle up to the, uh, the outfall. Bill Kingdom spent 20 years as a water expert with the World Bank. Now retired, he's been looking into sewage treatment plants run by Thames Water. He's taken me to a pipe that comes from one of them. Right. So where are we then? So here we are at the Cassington Sewage Treatment Works outfall. The pipe is underwater, so we're putting a camera down to see it. Right. There we go. I love a mucky film. Down we go. So we can see the pipe there now, and it's there's obviously a quantity of material flowing out of the pipe. Lots of little brown chunks. There's some white. There's a lot of fish swimming around the entrance as well, feeding. Yeah. There's definitely stuff coming towards the camera. An industry insider has told us that properly treated sewage should not look like this. And Bill thinks he's uncovered a fundamental problem with this treatment works and others in the area. So what we found in, uh, in Cassington is that the treatment plant only has 74% of the capacity needed for the population that existed in 2020. But if you drive around the Oxfordshire area, you will see huge tracts of land being developed for housing. That's only going to increase the load on the treatment plant, which hasn't been expanded. I mean, they should only allow that to proceed if or when there is sufficient capacity, both in the pipes and in the treatment plant, to take that load. Thames Water told us the site has not discharged untreated sewage since March 2021 and the material entering the river from the outfall pipe filmed was within its permit limits. We accept it's unsightly and are working towards improving the situation. So, are sewage treatment works big enough to keep up with demand? Dispatches can reveal that four out of five large sewage treatment works that dumped untreated sewage last year did so because they are too small to cope. I've come to see a scientist who's been studying why treatment works use combined sewer overflows, or CSOs. We looked at all the data on the CSOs that were spilling, but also we connected them to the treatment works. Right. You see their capacity in terms of how much load they can treat. The main finding was that for the plants that spilled in 2021, 79% of them uh, were actually spilling because of the lack of capacity in their systems. Those CSOs were designed to be used only in extreme weather conditions. So now we have CSOs used even in some cases when it doesn't rain or when there is no extreme rainfall. Right, so the, the, the treatment works don't really have the capacity to deal with what's coming in, so they use those CSOs to deal with this overload. So why haven't they got the capacity? Because of increases in, in, uh, in populations. We are using now more water than we did when the plants were built. The situation will get worse with every year if we don't invest in, in upgrading the, the infrastructure. This requires both political pressure and it requires financing. Nick paints a really worrying picture of a sewage system that just can't cope. This is the sort of thing that organised countries can deal with. So why is it that we've got ourselves in such a pickle? Why can't we deal with our waste rather than pour it into the waterways that we swim in? Environmental and financial watchdogs police the UK's water companies. Last year, two of them launched a major investigation into sewage dumping by water companies in England. But are the regulators partly responsible for allowing the problem to get so bad? You need effective regulators. The funding for environmental protection within the Environment Agency has been slashed by 80% since 2010. Wow. Now, if you make those kind of cuts, that's going to affect the performance and that's going to have downstream impacts. Ofwat are the economic regulator 
Their priorities historically have very much been making sure that water bills stay affordable, making sure that the water companies are, are managing their finances in a way that enables them to discharge their statutory duties properly. If they were discharging their responsibilities properly, then we wouldn't be seeing all of these sewage spills. So would you say that off what and the Environment Agency have, have not been up to the job? They haven't had the capacity to do what they need to do. So government sets the budgets of those regulators. It also sets the policy priorities. So whether or not this is important. So what is the solution to this? And how much is it all going to cost? Infrastructure maintenance and upgrade. That's obviously a big thing. The cost of that is estimated by government at another £65 on your water bill per year. But at the moment, internally, government are saying any policy that is going to get taken forward must not add to the cost of living crisis. So if the, if the government don't do this, if they just kick this problem down the road and we don't deal with it, what's the consequence? We're going to keep having um, rivers and seas receiving uh, a whole load of sewage. It's the Environment Agency's job to police water companies in England. Its annual budget for enforcement fell from £11.6 million to £7 million between 2010 and last year. Helen Nightingale has just retired after working for the agency for over 30 years. This is her first ever interview. We used to go out all the time um, looking for pollution incidents, chasing right. them back and, and trying to stop them. You were making a difference, you were protecting the environment. Yeah, we were. We were the environmental police then. What, and what? it was great. So how has it all changed over the past 30 years? The funding's been cut massively, fewer environment officers to go out and do the work. We are only supposed to attend the very serious or quite serious incidents, the lower impact incidents, and then obviously told not to attend those. But what happens if those are occurring quite often? Then you get a chronic impact on the, the river that it will eventually start to deteriorate and we won't know why because we won't have any record because nobody's been to have a look. So tell me about the relationship between the Environment Agency and the water companies. How has that changed over the years? We aren't as aggressive. We don't enforce to the same extent. So now water companies investigate their own incidents and tell us what category it is. They take their own samples at sewage works. So you have to trust what the water companies tell you? Yeah, so if they take a sample and they tell us it was fine, then we have to trust that. After talking to Helen, I can see how this problem has got so bad. You know, sewage dumping is meant to be tightly controlled, but the Environment Agency doesn't have the funding, doesn't have the staff or the right approach to hold these companies to account. And it seems that they are using the companies to police themselves, which clearly isn't working. Last year, a court heard how Southern Water had for years covered up illegal sewage spills by very significant underreporting. It was fined a record £90 million for deliberately dumping billions of litres of raw sewage into protected seas for its own financial gain. The Environment Agency told us water companies have rightly been condemned for allowing far too many sewage spills and we are holding the industry to account on an unprecedented scale. We operate within a tight budget and must prioritise to ensure we are doing the best we can. We ask Ofwat, the Environment Agency and the Environment Minister George Eustace to take part in this film. They all declined. All three are being investigated by the Government's Office for Environmental Protection over their roles in Britain's sewage scandal. Off what told us, we take our responsibilities on the environment extremely seriously and are pushing companies to do the same. Where we find that companies have fallen short, we will act. Over the last five years, we have imposed penalties and payments of over £250 million. 
The government said water companies' reliance on overflows is unacceptable and they must significantly reduce how much sewage they discharge as a priority. Under new plans, they will face strict limits and must completely eliminate the harm sewage discharges cause to the environment. Fixing our Victorian sewage system is going to take an awful lot of money. And with the economic crisis looming, I can't see that happening anytime soon. But until it does, going for a swim is going to feel like a real gamble.